Welcome to episode number 83, Surviving the IVF Two-Week Wait. I'm sure you would agree that the two-week wait after an embryo transfer is probably one of the most challenging parts of an IVF journey. This episode is for you if you are yet to experience it or if you have already one or several times. First things first, you will survive, obviously. (laughs) And I am hoping to support you today so that your experience can be more wholesome. In my clinical experience, I've witnessed women having a calm and grounded experience simply by shifting their perspective. And the work that we do in my program, IVF Magic, facilitates this. This mindset shift is available to anyone and everyone, by the way, and can greatly alter your IVF experience and I believe your outcome as well. Now, a calm and grounded experience does not equal all butterflies and rainbows. To expect to be free of anxiety or curiosity at this time would be a lot of pressure and really quite unrealistic. The two-week wait is a highly anticipatory experience. After all of your hard work, everything has stopped and now you have nothing else to do but wait. It is expected for you as a normal human being existing on this planet to feel anxious or excited or a combo of both during this time. And that is okay. In case you need to hear this, you can be anxious and fall pregnant. Pregnancy won't be magically rewarded to you because you managed to stay entirely calm and repeated positive affirmations every day. You get to show up however you need to over these two weeks and my only ask of you is that you feel it all rather than suppress it all. I believe that the key to surviving and thriving in this two-week wait is to feel and process your feelings as they arise, to accept and love yourself exactly as you are showing up. By the time we had decided to embark on our IVF journey, I had come into a really good place. I had worked through a lot in our fertility journey and I felt quite accepting, surrendered and trusting of the process and the bigger plan for us. Even being in this healthy place, the two-week wait was challenging. I felt as though I was waiting for the biggest deciding announcement of my life, which would alter my entire destiny, and I was. (laughs) It's a big deal. I did not do pregnancy tests, I was not part of Facebook groups or online forums, and I didn't obsessively Google. Overall, I felt grounded and excited, but I never want to promote perfectionism. I did get on Google and search a couple of things. I worried about things like carrying heavy shopping bags. I wondered if going out on our boat and driving over speed bumps in the car would affect implantation. (laughs) And by the way, side note, my Google search only told me that everything was bad and that I should be fearful about it all from grocery bags to boats. So I ignored that. (laughs) I let myself know that it was okay and normal to feel this level of anticipatory anxiety without questioning it or reprimanding myself because I should do or I should know better. What good would that be? What good would that do? Our embryo transfer was on the day of my husband's 30th birthday, and right after the procedure, we headed to a hotel. I put on a fabulous little black dress. We went out for drinks, mocktails for me, and dinner with friends, and the next day we drove to the lake and spent the whole day out on the boat. It was bumpy, and it was fun, and it felt right. I laid in the sun with a good book and relaxed for the rest of the weekend. I knew that the biological process of our little embryo would take three days to implant into the lining of my uterus, and I decided to enjoy myself in those three days. Because what is more fertile than that? I'm not saying that the only reason we conceived our rainbow baby in this cycle was because of my mentality, but why the hell not aim to have a beautiful experience for yourself because the outcome is always uncertain anyway. This experience gets to be about you too, not just that little embryo. There are hundreds of biological events that take place for your embryo to implant and for a pregnancy to be determined in that two-week period. So it is in this time that you must know that you have done everything that you can. You have done enough. You get to stop 
and surrender to the outcome. I encourage you to keep occupied in a healthy way rather than just busy. Busyness can be a distraction to what we need to process and feel. Find things that bring you joy and be selfish as hell. I'm going to leave you with a potent little activity for when interesting thoughts arise on the two-week wait, because they undoubtedly will, and because you don't have to believe every thought that you have. Ask yourself these questions out loud or take pen to paper. So when a thought or circumstance arises, you can ask yourself, what is the thought? One of mine was, I shouldn't have carried those heavy shopping bags. Then you can ask, what am I making this thought mean? What is behind it? For me, it was that I may have ruined our chances at implantation, that I am now to blame if it doesn't work because of those damn shopping bags. Then you can ask, how does this thought feel in my body? For me, my chest felt tight and my shoulders were tense. Then you can ask yourself, is this thought true? And list all of the reasons why it isn't true. For me, well, no, I have strong arms to carry those shopping bags. My uterus is strong. My embryo is strong. I can't physically impact implantation. Next, ask yourself, what is a new thought that I can believe? And this may be the opposite of the original thought. For me, my body is strong and capable of accepting this robust little embryo while doing the grocery shopping. And then how does this new thought feel in your body? Open, relaxed, loose. It feels good. I hope this helped you like it helped me, beautiful women. And remember that no matter the outcome, you are enough and you are worthy right now.